sure that you have seen at least one dog in your life. I mean, you've probably seen more than one, likely too many to count. Dogs are one of the most popular pets around the world, and maybe you even own one. But did you know that around 20% of all dogs suffer from osteoarthritis? That is one in five dogs. Yet there is no cure for this disease. So what can be done for dogs with osteoarthritis then? Hello, my name is Emily Hasakawa, and today I am here to talk about my project on designing 3D printed unloader knee brace for canine knee osteoarthritis. First of all, what even is osteoarthritis? Osteoarthritis is an age-related degenerative joint disease that is caused by deterioration of cartilage, a slippery connective tissue that acts as a cushion to protect the ends of bones and allows joints to move smoothly. Age, injury, repetitive stress, or disease can cause this cartilage to break down, eventually resulting in bone-to-bone -bone contact and bones grinding against each other. This causes pain, stiffness, and inflammation. In terms of dogs, the knee is one of the leading sites of osteoarthritis, and in certain dog breeds, knee osteoarthritis has 20% prevalence. Yet again, there is no cure for this health condition, and treatments are limited. Let's look at treatments that are currently available. Pain medications are commonly used, but bone-to-bone -bone contact is so not resolved, thus dogs are asked to refrain from going on longer walks to prevent bones from grinding against each other and causing further damage. Alternatively, surgeries may also be considered. However, many dogs suffering from this age-related disease cannot undergo surgeries due to age or other health conditions. Additionally, both medications and surgeries impose financial obstacles on our owners. Then, upon visiting the Ranchlands Veterinary Clinic, I learned that putting human wrist braces on canine knee to support and stabilize the arthritic joint is also an option if they can find one that fits. Thus, I started looking into knee braces. It turns out that in humans, many types of knee braces are available, including unloader braces, and this incorporates a three-point leverage system. This three-point leverage system applies pressure and forces to the three points shown in the images and unloads the impacted component of the knee by increasing joint spacing between the femur and tibia on the arthritic side. This separation decreases or prevents bone-to-bone -bone contact and reduces pain and improves the knee joint function. However, knee brace for dogs in general are very limited and I could not find any unloader braces for dogs. As a dog lover who wants to live with dogs when I am older, I believe that I understand how important dogs are to their owners. Thus, I identify the circumstance of having to invest in treatments that are expensive and will still not enable dogs to fully enjoy themselves in daily activities like long walks or a problem. Therefore, I decided to develop an affordable yet effective device that would be a solution to the common health condition and will improve the quality of lives of many dogs. The three most important factors that I kept in mind for my project were the affordability, effectiveness, and ease of use of my device. In other words, these were the problems that I had addressed in my design. The design of my D brace is similar to dogs of human and loader braces. The main structure is composed of two axes that are joined by a hinge and will act as a knee joint. This will be attached to a dog's leg at the thigh and the calf using adjustable material. Then, most importantly, the adjustable elastic band that forms a double helix would act as a three-point leverage system and unload the arthritic side of the knee. In order to pursue affordability of my device, I decided on making a 3D printed unloader brace. This means that individuals can print a knee brace for their dogs with 3D printers at home, library, or stores. This will cut shipping costs and labor costs. Additionally, it can be scaled for different sizes of dogs. Now, what 3D printing filaments should I use? In choosing my filament, I was looking for a high strength, not too flexible, very durable, non-soluble, food safe, and non-hygroscopic material. This is a table I made of properties of the six most commonly used types of 3D printer filaments. The most important factors to consider for my device are high strength and insolubility. Food safety is also important since the device may come in contact with dog foods or other foods, while hygroscopic materials should be avoided since the device cannot constantly be stored in a cool and dry environment. Thus, I decided to go with PLA. It is also nice that PLA is easy to use, requires low print temperature, and has minimal shrinkage. They are also one of the cheapest filaments. 
In fact, food safe PLA can be bought for around $25 per kilogram. However, limitations of PLA exist too. Since the durability is not the best, repairs may have to be printed from time to time when the dog plays rough and breaks the device. For designing, I use Tinkercad to add and subtract provided shapes and create parts of the main structure of my device. After many trial and error and modifications as outlined in the written portion of my project, this is my latest prototype. Some of the characteristics of the latest prototypes are the following. Starting with the hinge, my design now uses a metal screw. I began with designing a hinge that is completely made of 3D printing filaments. However, after testing, I figured that since a 3D printed curved, curved surface cannot be perfectly smooth, the friction inside the hinge causes more force to be needed in order to generate the required torque. Thus, my device uses a metal screw now. My past prototype also used shoelaces for attaching the main structure to the canine leg. However, after testing and looking at the physical formula for calculating pressure, I concluded that since shoelaces causes force to be applied over a smaller surface area, pressure was high on my leg and it hurt. Thus, my new prototype uses Velcro shafts that can be adjusted like this. These are the holes for Velcro shafts right here and right here. I use elastic straps for the three-point leverage system, and I use buckles for attaching them so that it would be easier for customers to put the device on the dog. This is elastic straps, and this is the buckle. For this, I made this elevated piece right here so that the buckles can be easily glue gun. This way. The spacings between each moving part in the hinge were all decided upon trial and error, and both the height and length of axes can be easily changed and customized for each dog. More specifics and the various modifications that I made to my design throughout the project are all outlined in the write-up for my project. For product testing, I gave dog owners a knee brace to take home so that it can be worn by dogs in an environment that they are used to. I also sent Google Forms for the dog owners to fill out, and this Google Form asks questions to evaluate the following criteria. Sturdiness of device, ease of use, comfort for dog, and functionality of device. From the feedback I received, I learned that although my device was sturdy and did not break, it kept on sliding off since canine thighs are conical. I plan to fix this by adding a harness to my design. I was also informed that having four dangling straps was confusing and not easy to put on moving dogs. Thus, I plan to adopt a snowboard-like strapping system. This would mean that the straps would be adjusted by rotating a knob, thus having no dangling straps. In conclusion, I designed an unloader brace for canine knee osteoarthritis, and it helped to solve the problem of how dog owners are currently required to invest in treatments that are expensive and will still not enable dogs to fully enjoy themselves in daily activities like long walks. In other words, designing an affordable, effective, and easy to use device was my objective. My unloader brace is affordable since it only cost me $19.05. However, the ease of use of my device needs improvement since I received feedback that putting on the device was confusing on moving dogs. Additionally, my brace should theoretically be effective. However, a future research will need to be performed to measure its effectiveness. It may be difficult to measure pain reduction in non-humans, but I can use fluoroscopy and record the separation between the femur and tibia while an arthritic dog is using my knee brace. In short, I was able to solve one problem, affordability, while I still need to work on the other the ease of use. The effectiveness would also need to be proven in future research. Thus, only a third, per, uh, a third of my problem is completely resolved and I am determined to further my project. In the future, when my affordable and easy to use knee brace is completed and is proven to be effective, I will practically apply it by sharing the 3D printing design to the public or selling the device incorporating a virtual order manufacturing methodology. Here are my references. Thank you for listening.